And we should be audible now. <laughs> Good morning, Night City. Today's body count lottery opens the day with a nice and round 20. But we'll need to skip over the details today as we have a special guest in the studio, a major contributor to ruining low ball counts on the lottery of several days, the one to kill Adam Smasher in an unforgettable shootout in Corpo Plaza, and a lady who broke the hearts of anyone watching the recordings from, recordings from that night, Rebecca! Sharpest shot in Night City and the best girl in Edge Runners. And anyone who disagrees is free to step up and end up the same way my bro did. Just without my dick out. <laughs> and there we are. Um. <laughs> <laughs> right, nice intro, guys. <laughs> Well, uh, so if anyone doesn't know, uh, today we've got Alex Cazares with us here, uh, the English Woo! voice actor for Rebecca in uh, Edge Runners, as well as, well as many other roles. And that's what we'll start with. Alex, introduce yourself to, to the unknowing. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Thank you for having me. I, um, yeah, we're here talking about voices. <laughs> oh, Tidu, help me. <laughs> Uh, where have you worked before? How long have you been in the industry? Something, please. <laughs> to to get it out of the way, uh, this is I, I I am at Nolan or I'm Nolan Void. Oh yeah, uh, we should introduce ourselves other, as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I am just a coordinator for Council Mechanica. It's just the casual name we're giving to our media network that we do on Twitch and YouTube. The more bigger and more important contributor. Uh, besides Alex, who is, we again, really appreciate for taking her time out of the day to come by and give us, uh, <laughs> some of her free time is Tidu. And he is That's known me. for his essays, his, uh, last minute essays on YouTube and, uh, his username on Twitter can be found at, no, can be found at, he can be found <laughs> on Twitter at cute me approved. I can be found at space between all. And uh, Alex can be found at Alex underscore E underscore Cazares. <laughs> That's also important. Oh, thanks, Dino. I would have forgot that. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, yeah, I make bad videos uh, that nobody watches, but I'm not the star here. Not today. Never. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I watch your videos, so you. that's a lie. <laughs> Someone. Um, so that was you. <laughs> yes. Uh, Alex, uh, again, I know I already said it, but thank you for stopping by today to give us a good bit of your time. Um, we were just uh, wanting to know how you're doing today. Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm just getting over COVID, so you know how things can be kind of slow getting out of the sick and stuff yeah. but besides that thank you so much for having me i no, love talking you. to anime and cyberpunks and edge runners <laughs> yeah, thank you for uh letting us have you on here that's you, you have no idea how much we appreciate that well oh, no problem i i i think that um i think that the videos you guys make are really cool and i i think that it's it's so much fun to talk about things that people are passionate about you know so uh it's it's a lot of fun t is the one doing all the work here don't give me any credit all i do is flip a switch and start streaming and yeah and, <laughs> and ask people right. hey would you like to talk with us on stream and people are like sure and we need to scrabble together or something <laughs> yeah okay i guess i'll i'll, I'll concede on that um, that's it. hard i i have the worst time reaching out to people it's Same. really just nerve-wracking for me because you know, it's just talking to strangers is hard sometimes. <laughs> so I, I think what you do is awesome. And we do have uh, Luna in the chat as well uh, saying hi to you, Alex. That's the person I put you in touch with about the new banner for your Twitter profile. She just wanted. Oh, and she wanted to let you know that she's finished your banner. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. I was going to get back to you today. <laughs> well, there we go. Amazing. So we'll have that. <laughs> You guys can get that squared away later today. Um, awesome. Uh, so um, we we have our list of questions that we're going to be asking. Um, and we're, 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 
we're all just kind of sitting here with with um like just the most awkward sort of tension uh so let's get it out of the way so people don't worry about asking about it and we yeah. can have the mods clarify to check the vods after um so there was some breaking news today uh concerning something very relevant to our guest here and just the general industry of video games and the mistreatment of some staff and crew that work on them. And that is that um, uh, Helena Taylor, uh, Bayonetta's original voice actor, uh, turned down the role for voicing her in Bayonetta 3 because she was offered uh, only $4,000 for this character that she's done for what, it, it, it's over a decade at this point, isn't it, TD? It is, yeah. PS3 was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, we uh, we here at Council Mechanica very much fight for the better treatment of employees and workers in general. Uh, so to hear that this sort of legacy character of sorts is being mishandled and mistreated with this way... We're, we're not going to go and point the fingers of blame at anyone directly. Obviously, this is somewhere in the jurisdiction of Nintendo or Platinum or both of theirs collective decisions. But uh, I, I think I can speak for the whole group when I – maybe not necessarily Alex, but I will speak at least for Council Mechanica. Uh, this is not okay. This <laughs> needs to stop happening between voice actors and the treatment developers receive – and uh, animators and so much more within this industry, but also within many others, for all the effort that these people put into producing these things that we are so passionately invested in, that they work very hard to create and make the best they possibly can. This is not even remotely appropriate or sufficient in this consistently changing and worsening uh, economic and societal climate. Damn, if, if only we had some power to actually influence that. <laughs> well, you know, obviously there's what she has requested, which is those who are going to pick up the game, uh, please consider donating to your chosen charity in its place. And uh, we also need to clarify on this part, uh, especially. Uh, Helena has had to break NDA by coming forward on this statement. Mm -hmm. Um so uh, she is taking a big risk here by clarifying this, and there is a good chance she might be blacklisted from the industry as we're speaking. Um, and I guess that's all we have to say on it. Uh, it is up to Alex. If she wants to say anything, we're not going to pressure her. We're not going to ask her to say anything. But we do ask chat that if um, anyone in chat is going to ask about it again, there's only so much that we can say or offer on it. And we ask that you respect boundaries and be professional about this as we're trying to be. And she will answer whatever she wants to. And she is more than within her right to turn any questions down as well. So, yeah. no, and no, that's not just to this topic. No cool. pressure, cool. Alex, we say as we put no the microphone pressure. in front of your face. <laughs> 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 all right, sounds good. Uh, I just think that's a bit too bad. That's all. Yeah, you know. That's fair. Uh, <laughs> I it, it always sucks when they mess with artists. That's all. <laughs> but maybe maybe um maybe with platforms like Twitter, it you know it it definitely helps because people are at least aware of what they're doing now. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure the same shit went on in the 80s and 90s, but we were just were not aware unless someone came up forward and made an interview and that still yeah. singled them out. And how many and how many people watched the interview back then? It's so much easier now. The oh, yeah. biggest thing I think to emphasize is that uh, for her to have been brave enough to break this, you know, confidential agreement, but more importantly, to be very direct and give people... Uh, I keep saying it, direction on what to do. Uh, yeah, just do what you should always be doing in this case. And I'm going to go a little bit further out of the particular topic and say this is what should have been done with Activision Blizzard last year or a year before that. But 
vote with your wallet and don't support them whatsoever. Yes, I yeah. am going to very comfortably and openly shame anybody who's playing Overwatch 2 right now. <laughs> and moving on from that, um, you know, just consider putting your money elsewhere. Obviously, it doesn't That's the hurt. only thing that matters, you know, yeah. to a lot of people. And I, I know it feels like you're just one person, but if enough people do, it, some, you know, it, it matters to them. Numbers always matter, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Consider putting your money, money somewhere else. Like us, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, uh, at Tidu or uh, on uh, Patreon is accepting uh, submissions in the form of payments towards uh, helping him no. further his goal of making it a full time thing if possible. So, what is that link again, uh, Tidu? What, what, what Patreon account is that? Just go to my YouTube and it's there. <laughs> I, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember. <laughs> Either way, uh, moving on. Uh, once again, we're not the star here. Uh, Alex, uh, we got you here because everyone here got enamored with Edge Runners. The dub was great. Your uh, work on that was amazing. J Thank you. Just putting that out here, there. But uh, you've been in industry. Else who worked on the dub. Yeah, uh, you've been in industry uh, in for some time. When did you get started? What other roles are you particularly proud of? What, what have you been working on? Okay, I well, I kind of started in 2014-ish because, you know, when things get going, it's kind of slow, but mm -hmm. you eventually gain some traction. I, I think one of my first anime dubs was Glitter Force. <laughs> oh, right? And, and I was super lucky because the director was Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, uh, and you guys all know yeah, she yeah. directed Cowboy Bebop, am I right? I was freaking! <laughs> so it wasn't a bad intro into the anime dubbing world. <laughs> oh, definitely. That's a good start. Yeah, and then um, after that, I think I, I, I've worked on Boss Baby back in business as a baby. As Stacy, uh, I'm also Carl Casagrande from the Casagrandes, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, roles here and there. Those are two of my favorite. Oh, I also, I also play Barry from the Mighty Ones, <laughs> and, then, and then a certain gremlin child from WarioWare. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lulu. Yep. Oh, I love doing that. That was so cool. But I also like like to play Mario games or I did so it was <laughs> <laughs> it's always a trip when you get to roll something that you that you like mm. yeah 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 I can imagine just being into something and suddenly hey we want to work on that it's like <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> hold on just let me <laughs> get my nerves out of the way <laughs> accurate depiction of both me and Tidu but more Tidu than me in uh, our pre-interview we did last week. I'm still sweating from uh, last week. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was great. We all gabbed for like two hours. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, I, I mean, hopefully we will or won't do it for another mm -hmm. uh, 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 two hours again. But, you know, we'll see where this takes us. Um, before we get too much further <laughs> in, I do want to uh, put this out there. Uh, chat, we are accepting questions, and we have moderators in chat looking for these, and they will be uh, sending anything in particular they think we should be noticing for at the end of the near the end of the stream to bring up as a question. Uh, so please feel free to put those in there. Uh, obviously, if there's question redundancy, you know we'll be moving on from that. Typical, typical. Uh, well. Uh, moving on to, to the uh, role that uh, got you over here. Oh, God, that sounds bad. Uh, <laughs> let, let's just shorthand that and uh, tell us about Rebecca from your perspective. Did you have any difficulty getting into the role or was it easy to connect to her? Was any scene particularly difficult or pleasant for whatever reasons? Okay. Uh, well, I think it was really cool when we got the audition. It It was something like probably your early 20s, low-class Californian. That's mm -hmm. me. <laughs> uh, she was like a, a solo. I didn't really know what that meant at the time. But but the main descriptors were like, short, spunky, trigger-happy, unrequited love. <laughs> so that's that's what they kind of gave us to get in, to get into her. And... Um, I the first audition I sent out was kind of balls to the wall, just complete energy up to 11. 
And then they were like, we want to make sure she's not too lowly. Can you do, can you do, <laughs> can you do one that's a bit more grounded? So I ended up doing a callback that was um, taking the energy down a bit. And f for, you know, there's a bit, there's some quieter moments in Edge Runners, mm -hmm. like when she's talking to David and stuff about his addiction. <laughs> oh, definitely is an addiction. Yeah, so those, so those, it took about two auditions and then I got the role. Oh, amazing. Uh, I have to admit that, yeah, with uh, how, how you portray the character, the jumping between very high energy screaming and the uh, quieter moments, I think is really, really well balanced. Both times it feels like accurate to the character. Yeah, thanks. I, I thought so too. She She's very much a, a woman who lives in the extreme, right? Yeah, from one extreme to the other even. Yeah, it's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, that, 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 that was the uh, auditioning, but when recording the lines themselves, did you have uh, an easy time with her? Was it easy to connect to her once oh, yeah. you had those connecting points there? Um, I think, I don't know if everyone who who does anime feels the same way, but the first day is usually kind of hard because I, you know, you're getting into the character and you're, you're trying to, you, you're figuring out where she lives in your, in your voice, you know, like yeah. where to, and, and, because, because they have a, they have a vision, you have a vision or they have a, a sound in their head and you guys all got to match it up. So I, I think after the first initial day, things went pretty smooth. <laughs> That's great. We, we, yeah, it, it wasn't too bad. By the end, it, it, you know, it felt, it felt good by the end. Mm. Well, I'm terrible when it comes to voice acting. I've just have a very flat voice, as you can hear. <laughs> so I don't know if I can directly relate, but I think I understand what you mean. So we, I, I want to know more about uh, the actual voice acting process for that role. Uh, what sure. it was like with uh, how, in particular, you were actually interacting with the ADR director. I would also like for you to uh, put particular emphasis on who you were working with, um, if that's not a problem. And uh, if you could tell us if there was anything unique or specific about uh, the crew that you were working with for Rebecca and Edge Runners that you feel stood out or uh, has left an impact on you in a way where you're like, I don't think I'm going to be able to experience something like that again, or it's just not going to be something that is 100% replicatable. Oh, okay. Those are so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> let me let me try to remember a few of them. <laughs> I think. Let's start I... with the first one of who it was that was directing you guys. Because <laughs> I think a lot of people will find that cool. Oh, all right. Well, it was Wendy Lee. She, uh, I've I worked with her once before on Rent a Girlfriend, but I, I don't. She's not directing. Or she, she directed that for a while, I think. So I had met her previously. So that's always nice. You know, you're not as nervous. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we also worked with CD Project Red, too. They were always there at the recordings, keeping our dub honest. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And the, we, would, we would get, like, they, they took so much they took a lot of special care with each line. They they would usually have like the line that they thought would work, maybe mm -hmm. what the original the original meaning might have been off to the side, like this is exactly what the Japanese is mm -hmm. um translated over. And then there might also be an alternative line that is, you know, even more off the wall or something. And we just kind of see what fits, you know what I mean? So like uh there might be there, there might be a line, we're getting steamrolled by Militech! And there might also be a, an alternative line of, why are we getting our ass blasted by Militech? You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. then we just we just kind of see what, what works and what, what sounds right. Mm, okay. Actually, that's... Uh... 
uh, to go I'm going to sidetrack there a bit, but that, that actually brings the point that I also saw that mentioned in the chat. There are a bit of uh, differences between Japanese uh, dub and the English dub. Uh, mm. for, for example, in English, is there is much more liberty with using the lingo for cyber from cyberpunk, like Chum, Nova, so, and so on and so forth. Uh, did you have any freedom in regards to that? Did you have any impact? Could you ad lib something, or was it just all the takes were given to you from the high up? What that there were some chances to ad lib, but they were, you know, like they were really, they were really careful about what they put in and put out. For instance, mm -hmm. I think when Rebecca was like trying to give her talk to David, mm -hmm. she go. She says, yo, David, I think it was just David or something like that. And I, I don't know. I put in a yo because it sounded right in my head. It, it and, was the better choice. I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I don't know. It kind of worked out. So we're just kind of feeling out what the character might say or how she. What what's it like to be Rebecca? She might say, yo, or Chum, and it, it kind of makes sense to me that it it would work in English because we have a lot of things like, hey, dude, yeah. hey, Chum, it it works. We have um, something in relation to that from uh, Luna and uh, Luna and Dorica in chat. Uh, how uh, how did you get this chance to uh, give the best Rebecca that you could and what what was it behind the energy and the ideas you had with her when you finally got into the point where you were voicing her accounting for the things that they were telling you with when you were thinking about what they wanted for her voice mm -hmm. combined with what you said earlier of helping find the voice what do you think was particular about helping you settle in on that final uh, performance that you were giving hmm well we well we started with the with that i think episode 3 we did everything pretty much in order and oh, gosh it's kind of hard it it kind of just happens organically you know what All i right. mean they'll be like oh that's a bit too that might sound a bit too sexy she doesn't really do that or that might be a bit too calm it, it it's really just going back and forth and plugging in your take and seeing like what they like and with her she <laughs> she's usually having some big emotion and I, I always think it's fun to you know to go all out so <laughs> it I don't know it just worked out so in, in relation to that we have from both Quadrachick and Boof uh, one of our moderators thank you for stopping and our regulars, thanks for being here, guys. Thank you for um, being here. <laughs> I uh, hope I'm answering your questions all right. <laughs> a lot of people would say that I, I think the ones that stick with them the most are obviously uh, a good couple of the lines from Act 3. You know, we, we have the obvious of, uh, hey, I don't, you know what, I'm just going to ask you if you can do it live here on stream because I know people will get a kick out of it. Yeah. The, um, hey, I don't do, uh, well, just being friends line. No. Oh, yeah. It was like, hey, I don't do good just being friends. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I had asked you in the pre-interview that there's a certain uh, technique to that performance. And between that and, um, yo, uh, hey, David, what's up? You need something? What's up, Chum? And, and and just a repeating of certain words. With that, I, I'm asking multiple questions again. I apologize. It's all uh, good. With, with that apartment scene, was mm -hmm. there anything particular that you were keeping in mind for voicing that line or a, an energy or a tone or atmosphere you were thinking about while doing that? But mm -hmm. I, I will mention it for the audience since we discussed it in the pre-interview you emphasized that there was a certain uh, bit of pain and disappointment, but also like uh, hope, uh, j just sort of open venting that you were doing in that line in Act Three of openly voicing to David that uh, 
Rebecca was not game about just being friends, that she was interested in him and he was just clearly not taking any of the hints or he was maybe being a little careless about He's turning like her down. Him. Yeah. <laughs> is, is there anything you want to give in comments on those two particular scenes? Well, when we first kind of see Rebecca, like when he goes to her house, she's, yeah. she's I kept in mind that She's friendly, she likes David, but she's still got a gun because, you know, who trusts who in Night City, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's that's one of the reasons I liked her character so much is because you have this chick that she... Ooh, I hear somebody's talk back. <laughs> Could you guys mute oh, no. me? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, that's me, that's me. <laughs> it's my bad, I just I kept hearing myself. Uh, thank you. She, she had, she didn't quite, in Night City, you don't really trust anybody. Like, like, uh, Maine says, you know, don't let us be our, don't let us be your crutch, because someone, it, we're not, we're from Night City, we're not from, like, uh, some nice run-of-the-mill, um, suburb that we're best friends forever. Shit happens. I think it's really endearing that Rebecca was kind of guarded with him, but she she watches him a lot, and she made the decision that she liked David and that he is a nice dude and he's worthy of her her loyalty, you know? So I, I always kept in mind that Rebecca, Rebecca comes from a place of support and love and she doesn't necessarily need him to reciproc reciprocate her love but she's gonna be there anyways and that was so endearing to me for with her uh, uh was that, that, that was part of the question that that in particular was something we had mentioned in that or we had gone over in that pre-interview was that you were playing her from the angle of having accepted that likely was going to go nowhere, but that regardless, yeah. Rebecca was still going to be by his side and be supportive of him. Do you, Yeah. were you coming at that from a particular direction? Because I could see it being one way of, she knows that he only has eyes for Lucy, but she needs to be there when uh, maybe Lucy is not necessarily available in the way David needs someone to be for him because she's able to be selfless in that way that for as all the energy and focus she has on herself and her skills at the end of the day uh rebecca is still the best character in the show because i said so no uh <laughs> rebecca is actually <laughs> extremely selfless and very well adjusted and kind of a rock in a way for the rest of unexpected, the group unexpected right rest. When the person less least suited to the situation actually is the only adult in the room. It's kind of funny. <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> I feel the same way. And it, it's funny that she's the she's the adult in the room, but she's also the comedic relief. <laughs> she doesn't she doesn't take these awful things too seriously like a, like David even. It it's kind of neat that they both had similar things happen to them. Mm -hmm. She loses her brother. He loses his mother. But he went a completely different route than her. She didn't seem like she was going to slip into cyberpsychosis. Yep. She had a pretty level head about it. It. I think that's really cool how it showed how not everybody has that in them, you, yeah. you know? She had a minor freak out in the moment, but after that, she got new hands, did the same party tricks as her <laughs> brother, and that, that, that was it, basically. Uh, I'm going to well, shout out a uh, different podcast here for a second, Giga Boots. First of all, you guys suck at pronouncing Polish names. Second of all, they uh, had a talk there, like, uh, at the very end, uh, where Rebecca is like, hey, I'm not equipped to be the adult here. Why is nobody listening to me? And I think that's just, that just perfectly encapsulated Rebecca as a whole yeah. and her arc. Um. It, it, the other thing that comes to mind is this idea of more shows nowadays being very uh, comfortable with having characters in their cast that don't have an arc to go through. 
their character is done and developed and the experience for the audience is discovering this through the game. Their arc is done, but we mm -hmm. still get to go through it because we see uh, or hear their behaviors, their actions, their decisions, and their statements as mm -hmm. they're going through that story. I think that's probably a strength too, Rebecca, is that it's likely that her arc either happened off screen or before the show even started at the point that it did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it'd be so cool to see what her and Pilar were up to before, right? <laughs> uh, I think that there was a lot of development between her and David in that montage where no one was speaking. Yeah. Uh, I, w I wish so there... I wish we all got to dive deeper into that because it was so cool. I would have loved to see them actually take on Maelstrom and do that kind of stuff. But I think we proposed the idea that if there is any more Edge Runners to come at any point, uh, mm -hmm. if they were to touch this plot again or the characters, it needs to almost exclusively just be episodic things and not alter the plot or the interactions in any way whatsoever. And I think, <laughs> I, I know there, we we have a, uh, Tidu has a co-streamer or co-commentator on one of the podcasts he participates in. Do I? That <laughs> definitely would love to see more of Rebecca's brother, for sure. Oh, yeah. I He's so funny. I love Pilar. I, I think that I, I was really bummed when they killed him off. Yeah, yeah, he he was a great comedic relief, but yeah, uh, I think we mentioned uh, some time ago that if there were to be any expansions on this, even if I think that would be a negative in general, I think the story is perfect as it is. But just uh, unconnected episodes of me and the boys doing crimes, basically, that would be great. Oh, that would be so good! I would totally dig that because that was. They gave us everything I wanted, but that, <laughs> I <Yeah>. wanted more. <laughs> well, that's how it is. Uh, Especially her getting better, you know, because she, she had, after Pilar died, she kind of got effed up with the recoil on her gun or her shotgun. I don't remember what she was using. And then I thought it was so cool how she's like, fuck this, I'm upgrading. <laughs> yeah, bigger arms. Did, right? And it worked. I thought it was so cool too how how she uses them too like how she walks around and stuff it it changed how her character moved a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's it, it, it's that and like the way that she's being emotive and the people and directions that she's looking in the show. I I kept rewatching it and even yesterday I was like, "Oh, holy shit, how have I not noticed this whole time?" that in the scene where they were rescuing uh, Rebecca from Maelstrom, uh, Rebecca seemed to have her eyes glued on David when she was given a thumbs up that, you know, things had gone well. And I'm like, how did I not notice that the first time? Yeah, Slowly yeah. Does. It's it, it's that idea of there's just, you, you know, the story's told. Everybody will say that. Tidu said that in his review. There's not really more to go into. But the question is, do you think, there is harm in exploring more of these characters and do you think it's possible to do it in a way without affecting the story we have whatsoever because I, I i think there's a good argument to be made for it being possible i always want more <laughs> i hate when stuff ends but that's just me i i wouldn't mind seeing like what happened i remember when david was all like uh the moon's a not really that great of a place lucy mm -hmm. it was something like that i think it'd be really cool to find out what happens to lucy up there i think it'd be cool if david and rebecca <laughs> weren't dead yep. like if adam smasher was like i'm gonna i'm gonna actually use david i think that would have been cool if your he... kids showed me the way of peace i will kill no longer <laughs> You oh, joke no, about no. that, but I think people would be clamoring for an episode of, like, this is just complete alt history, and, like, Adam Smasher just completely turns on oh, uh, Militech. You don't, you don't even... I, I, I think... I think, <laughs> I think if it was... Yeah, that'd be cool, too. I think if it were, like, in between the David and V storyline, I think it'd be kind of 
awesome if Militech, or Adam Smasher's Militech, right? Yeah. Arasaka. Arasaka. She just said that. My bad. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> I think it'd be cool if Arasaka took David and, you know, used him anyways because they're dicks. I mean, just because yeah. he doesn't want to, why would they listen to him? They're like, shut up. You're effed up. You're coming with us. We're going to reboot you. So I, I could see that happening. Alternative um, like timeline where David, David takes the scholarship and nothing goes wrong. <laughs> things are always going to go wrong. Of course. <laughs> I, well, I also think it would have been cool if uh, Falco would have scraped Rebecca up <laughs> and took her to a doctor. <laughs> there, there is a lot of art like that, I think. People were feeling feeling that very strongly. Yeah. And then she goes after Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> you joke, but I would totally fucking dig that. Like, just go for a hard turn in the character behavior. I mean, that sounds like fun, just seeing a different side of her of... Maybe they have a big encounter in the end, and Rebecca does maybe succumb to her anger in the end, and we see a parallel of her to David in that emotion still got the better of her. After. Oh, that'd be badass. <laughs> I, I think they could do more with it. I also wouldn't mind, you know, like I said, Pilar and Rebecca, where were they before? When he when he was like, I used to clip my mom's old cyberware hanging around or something. Mm. I thought, oh, I want to see that. Yeah, I, I, I think I wouldn't mind um, maybe even just like a five or ten minute segment of uh, the point in which Rebecca decided to upgrade the techie arms for helping her out with the usage of her guns. Especially oh, yeah. considering that like there's not really a way to do it in game. You just have to modify your stats properly. But her shotgun just has the nastiest kickback. And for those in chat and in here that weren't aware of it, there's a whole secondary feature where the recoil on guts is so fucking strong that if you, no matter what the height you jump from, as long as you fire off around as you're approaching the ground, you will completely negate your fall damage. God, so you guys were telling me that last time when I tried to do it. And, but I forgot to fire the round, so I died after oh, no. I jumped off the building. And I was like, they lied to me! <laughs> it also doesn't help that when you're falling, the game, like, sort of puts you in a uh, weapon withdrawn phase. Or uh, a, a weapon stowed phase of sorts. And you have to pull the trigger before it'll actually fire off. Yeah. Like, well, that didn't work. <laughs> Well, uh, on that topic, uh, since we know you are uh, playing the game, what is your experience with other cyberpunk media in general? Other cyber... Uh, well, I, I love the game. I'm... I'm... I don't know if I'm halfway through. I'm right where... I'm going through all the, the mini games. I'm going through all the side quests right I wish now. There were mini games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that uh, quick hacking mini game is good, but it needs a little more. Oh, yeah. It'd be cool if there were different ones not yeah. just that one not just that one for 40 hours <laughs> i'm really good at it though now <laughs> uh i haven't is it hanako hanako, hanako. yeah hanako i have i'm i can go to the club and meet hanako but i'm holding that off and going around and meeting people and <laughs> i freaking love it it's so much fun to get to see where David and the gang inhabit. Yeah. And e even though the anime is obviously more 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 pretty, <laughs> it's obviously more beautiful than than like and sensationalized than the video game just cuz that's anime where where the where the video game actually looks more like LA. <laughs> it's really gross <laughs> and and there's trash everywhere and stuff. I think canonically it is a lie, but it was rebuilt and renamed because of a guy that whose last name was Knight, but I'm not Knight? On the, good on the specifics. Oh, yeah, 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 because that Knight, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see. I, oh, I just, I love that I, that I... I got to see the anime, and then it uh, it obviously inspired me to play the video game, mm -hmm. and it made everything better to me. Like like when I jump off a building into a trash can, I'm like, ah, David did that. Or if you, <laughs> or if you find like, uh, 
like the spot where he was waiting for his mom or, mm -hmm. you know, when she was getting cremated. It is so cool to get to go to the places in game and see where they lived. It's just, I, yeah. I think it's, I think it's cool that they were able, ooh, did Discord do something weird? No, 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 I think it's fine. Uh, from what I understand, the Trigger got the copy of a game and they got uh, hacks basically from CDPR to all, you know, get a free camera to look around the entire city. And I think every single place that is shown in the show is somewhere in the game. And that's really rad. I would agree on that. Yeah, I, I've, I've wanted to go to Rebecca and Pilar's apartment, but I haven't got that quest yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I was going to say, I don't know, that it, is it bound by a quest? Because I've seen people just kind of walk up to it and go inside. I, I walked up to it, but the, the door was locked. And then oh. I, I, I looked online that you have to get some, you have to do something and go into like a warehouse and download some info on a computer. Or I tried to do the thing they said to do, but it kept crashing my game. Oh, no. <laughs> So I was like, oh, I guess I'm not doing that right now. Oh, God, yeah, that's right. <laughs> the true cyberpunk experience. <laughs> yeah. Um, go ahead. Yep, I was just commenting on that. Uh, but uh, going on with our generic questions, I suppose. Uh, oh. Have you had any experience with any other tabletop role-playing games other than cyberpunk? No, just, just like what my friends have played. So mm -hmm. I, I kind of... They they they're not doing cyberpunk. They're more fantasy. Yeah, D &D. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. yeah, D and D. But uh, that that was basically my experience. Just what friends have said. But uh, I I grabbed the I've definitely grabbed one of the cyberpunk um, tabletop manuals to read through <laughs> just because I'm interested. Yeah, that, 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 that's fair. Uh, I think it's, uh, even if you're not playing with anyone, the experience of just going through that and imagining the possibilities is always very fun. Yeah, and I, I thought it was really cool how, I, I could be completely wrong about this, but it, I think I was reading that in the tabletop game, when you, when you get, when you mod yourself out with the chrome and stuff, mm -hmm. that kind of like if you go cyber psycho has something to do with how much humanity you have left. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, I, we can we can segue from that into another kind of bit of news that broke yesterday with a uh, advance. Uh, unfortunately, it won't be something that you can experience on consoles, sadly. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a breakthrough of a mod that got released yet or is being worked on or got released yesterday, wow. where cyber psychosis has been added into the game, oh, sure. and it does do a check of a humanity stat, um, really? lower quality. Uh, cheaper cyberware has a higher hit on your hum humanity score um, and That's higher cool. and more expensive stuff will not affect it quite as much. Mm. It also added in, uh, um, oh God, what are they called? Um, the the medicine. Oh yeah, uh, the immunosuppressants. You know <laughs> yes. So those got added into the game as well. And there are apparently other little checks that go on, but the main feature is it will affect your visuals. It can both negatively and positively affect scores in combat and mm -hmm. just in general. And it, it, I, I guess now, if you really want the authentic Edge Runners experience <laughs> and role play more, I guess you gotta play the PC version. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you can't do that on the PS4. That's too bad. I would have totally done that. Oh, well, that's how it is with mods, unfortunately. I know. Oh. Uh, I, I don't know if that's uh, if I'm confusing systems here. So, but I believe that in tabletop cyberpunk, uh, being exactly on the edge as David is in those last few episodes, on zero humanity right before cyberpunk cycles, but not exactly, is something mm -hmm. you can do, and it gives you mechanical benefits, but one bad roll, and boop, sorry, <laughs> your character's done. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly the case, because I think that's what uh, Mike Pondsmith uh, emphasized in his little post uh, Edge Runners viewing commentary, because a lot oh. of people were asking him about the nature of cyberpsychosis. Because it and... seems like, it seems like just at glance that the more chrome you get the more likely you're to 
psycho, cyber psycho, just because of when um, Maine's girlfriend, what's her name? Uh, Dorio. Dorio. Dorio, when she's like, you totally got to lay off the chrome, dude. We got to, like, pull some of that shit off of you. <laughs> that That's kind of what I thought it was at first until I read Pond Smith's thing. <laughs> Man, you may, must stop doing math. No, just one last job. <laughs> Someone yeah. in chat asking, is there um, after image frame lag behind me, like uh, the San Devastan already does? Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look that cool in game. Oh, um, isn't it cool in the anime? Oh yes. my god, they out, they out, they've outdone themselves. They I did do the color it. tones properly though, because right? the, uh, the the tealish color that you get when you go into a San Devastan state, um, it is accurate. It is also worth noticing, or not noticing, noting that you can, <laughs> in fact, push yourself as hard as David did. There are builds out there that will give you, like, 30 to 45 seconds worth of time in the Sandy. Really? That will just, yeah. I, I, I'll have to tell you about that one uh, after stream, Alex, because I'm sure you would like to give that a try. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> but you have to do a specific quest in a specific way in oh. order to get access to these mods and this particular San Devastan that rolls it so you can really uh, push your limits on it. If it's through the fingers, dude, I already killed him. <laughs> okay, yeah, you have to do it on a second file. <laughs> well. Welp. It did be like that. But yeah, typical RPG stuff where dude is very obtuse thinking a very specific way to unlock something cool. Like, yeah, I understand why that is, but why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, there are consequences when you decide to kill people. Yep. <laughs> like, you don't get them as your Ripper Doc anymore. <laughs> yep, yep, that does suck. I think... If... I also... Oh, go ahead. No, no, I just wanted to say, I think when I played, something was terribly wrong, uh, wrong with the file because I blew his head clean off and then I came back to that building a few missions later and he was there and he was like, hey, you punched me in the face. And I was like, I need a bit more than that. <laughs> I didn't punch you. No, that's not, that's, that's not, uh, that's probably just a glitch of him not being killed because that's the same line I got when I uh, partially caved his face in, even just through the dialogue <laughs> interactions. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'll have to go back and check. He might still be there. But after you punch him, you can't get any goodies, right? Yeah, it's that you literally just have to resist acting on him violently in that, and you get him as a Ripper Doc for the rest of the game. I honestly don't see how anyone could resist punching him in the face. <laughs> I was just about to say, it's a very hard thing to resist, and I think you have to make a conscious effort of it. It is a yeah. possible face. <laughs> <laughs> Same with Maelstrom. It was hard not to be like, shoot that guy's head off. It's a very cool scene. <laughs> the, 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 oh the, my the, god, the, yeah. The, we're going to talk over. about something that uh, the game does manage to parallel, or that I guess the anime managed to copy somewhat appropriately. That encounter in the uh, prologue, uh, not the prologue, in Act 1 with Maelstrom is probably one of the best uh, dialogue exchanges in the game. And probably one of the best points of player agency, too. Yep. Uh, because it was in the trailer. <laughs> it was in the trailer. Uh, I think there's like three or four different ways you can have that thing go in terms of how you talk. Like, you can escalate and then de-escalate and then immediately jump to blowing the head off the leader. And then you can actually have an opportunity to just walk out of there if you do it properly. But that means you have to spend all of your precious money that you farmed from side quests to get out of there unscathed. And it's like, is it really worth it then? Is it worth yeah. it more than the XP and street cred you get of just wiping out that branch of Maelstrom? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And it's very satisfying blowing his head off. <laughs> <laughs> And it's it's also just a great tutorial segment for the player of bouncing between, hey, how do you want to approach this? Do you want to be stealthy? Do you want a quick hack? Or do you want to go in guns blazing? Hey, there's going to yeah. be barricades that the enemies are going to use in order to protect themselves and bulletproof windows. Also, they're going to try – like it, it, it's – yeah, it's, a, it, it's act one. It's probably one of the best parts of the game. Yeah. I love that one. Yeah, and you get to hang out with – um. What's his name? Jackie. Jackie. Oh, Jackie. Poor soul, you were taken too soon. <laughs> yeah, I was bummed out. I even looked up, um, can I save Jackie? 
and it doesn't look like you can. No, <laughs> the, 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 the entire motif of death is uh, very hard in the entire uh, story in general, and that's like a starting point for me there. So, <laughs> unfortunate, my it, man. It, it is unfortunate. There are a good couple of quests, though, that you can do a follow through to get some answers about um, just his family interactions and other stuff. Yeah. And I think, Tidu, you mentioned that there's one particular little side quest where you can have a little more interactivity with his family in terms of something uh, like... It's very missable because at the very end where he dies, you can choose you either send his corp corpse to his mom or to a doctor. And if you send it to a doctor, that's it because corp will take it over. But if you send this to his mom, you get a funeral and everything. Oh, yeah. I got the funeral. <laughs> very sad. Yep. Uh, I like Jackie. That, uh, after, mm -hmm. after the exchange... I'm sure you guys have all played it, but after the exchange and you have to send him back and he's like done for, I I was kind of hooked by then. <laughs> the mm. story got me. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, well, speaking of sad, do you think there is a situation in which Rebecca could get through to David? <laughs> uh, uh, well, you know, we love who we love. <laughs> yep. and, and, and I think... I think someone hopefully will write a good fan fiction about it. <laughs> I, I don't even mean rom romantically when I wrote that question. I meant like just get to his head so that he'll stop being an idiot, honestly. Yeah, like <laughs> if we're going at it more um, followed through on thought, it would be like, do you see an outcome where she gets to him in such a point where they're still out there and running, maybe even right through the plot of... Uh, 2077 to the point where maybe they could have overlapped at some point. Do you see Bingo. Rebecca having the capability to get through to David in a way that it resonates or maybe come close to that moment where he finally finds his own dream of sorts to pursue? It, it, it would be, I guess is the right word, would be antithetical to um, Edge Runners. But at the same time, it's just in that wheelhouse of, hey, this would be a cool thing to add on to this setting and these characters. Yeah. Uh, I I really think that with David, he was kind of a runaway train. <laughs> mm. And and especially after Maine died, because Maine was kind of like his surrogate dad, also kind of keeping him on the the right road in a way, even though they're both edge runners. The straight and narrow uh, of criminal life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I I think that with David, hmm, I don't really think she could have stopped him because he had the means to go live a better life at a certain point. He, he took over the gang. He was making lots of eddies. He modded himself up. But... At a certain point, he could have taken those eddies and taken Lucy to the moon. She didn't have to go by herself if, if you know, yeah. one more job wasn't wasn't always in the works. Yeah. When when is enough enough? And I don't think David would have ever called it. That that, that is did. like the court tragedy, right there, right? Like not being mm -hmm. able to stop at the right moment. Uh, I think yep. you're right there. Can't and, stop, won't stop. Can't stop. Yep, stop. and and Rebecca, I mean, she's not his disciple, but she's she's his good friend, and she really cares about him. And kind of, she, I think, she knew that they were both on their way out if she followed David, and she wanted to, and mm -hmm. she wanted to deliver him to Lucy because that's what David wanted, and. Just because David wanted it doesn't mean it's a good decision, am I right? He should have yeah. taken the money, <laughs> took the different girl, went to the moon. <laughs> Very much uh, poignant for the character that literally the last two things she says are, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Very on point. Yeah. We're she... having a moment here. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, I, I think at that point she knew. Yeah. And one last what shot. A, one last try. What a, what a great um. What a great last last words though. It wasn't uh. It wasn't oh no or, or oh my god David we're gonna die it's fuck you. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Very in character. One last act of defiance. 
Yeah, that, that, that's all she is, I think. Uh, <laughs> n- not in the rising way, but I think that that's the very cool core of her character. She was probably the most rebellious out there in the entire crew. And that's why she was actually the be- best suited to the entire thing. <laughs> you might say she was best girl. You might Baby! say that. <laughs> Uh, well, I think we mostly covered some of those here. So, uh, circling back to you personally, anything uh, particular that you would like to work on, be it a specific story, a genre, or a type of character? Well, now I want to just be Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Oh, gosh, I, I want more edge runner stuff. I... Like, how long does it take to make that kind of anime? <laughs> I hope they have more. Well, um, They showed the trailer in 2019, I believe, and it released this year. <laughs> and they probably Ooh! worked for a long time before that. So, hey, we might yeah. live to see that. <laughs> Maybe, hopefully. Uh, I wouldn't mind working on more anime just because it's fun. <laughs> it, and I, I like it. And mm-hmm. it, I, I like getting interested in stuff and... It, it with anime it's fun because most of the time they finish the they finish the story mm-hmm. where where a lot of times you know in american television they're like one se- two seasons oh unfortunately we're not picking up your show again yeah we know <laughs> so you ended everything on a cliffhanger but <laughs> we we left it on a cliffhanger but also we're not renewing you <laughs> And that that always bums me out. So it's cool to work on stuff that has an ending, you know. Yeah. And definitely. we we do have a chat uh, member chiming in with: Are there any uh, particular JRPG series or games that you would like to participate in voicing in? Um, in particular, they mentioned: Do you have any interest in voicing a character for maybe Genshin Impact in the future? Well, voice. Anything that people have me on, just about. Um, I haven't played Genshin Impact. I'm looking it up right now. Genshin Impact. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, uh, I I don't really know a lot about the the role playing Japanese games. I think the only one that I was really aware of was. <laughs> remember a few years ago how they had that that one with the pigeons. Oh yeah, had a full boyfriend. Had a full boyfriend? <laughs> not yes! really playing game, and it's not Japanese. I think. <laughs> oh my god! Oh god, I love that. I don't know. I, I would. It'd be fun to do something like that if they talked. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think. You'd probably want to do something uh, within the wheelhouse. I keep saying that fucking term you'd probably want to be aiming for something like what spike chunsoft is working on um i don't know maybe go uh banging on uh kentaro uchikoshi's door and say <laughs> hey i want to be in ai somnium files 3 please make it happen you're going to be interacting <laughs> with the most insufferable people on earth <laughs> and you're gonna love them um I, 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 I mean characters not actual real people just for clarity. actual real people oh <laughs> I, I imagine if this new uh game from the danganronpa team ends up going well there'll probably be a sequel so maybe that's something you could look at because that's very much in the vein of stuff you're talking about your visual novels that have sort of an absurdist premise or a very <laughs> bizarre and outlandish cast of characters yeah um, <laughs> And you definitely would bring a sort of energy very much appropriate for those series and that type of writing. Yeah, for <laughs> you, you'd be a good fit for something very colorful, I think, uh, like this series. Yeah. It's, it's um for me at least, it's always more fun to, to play the loud and crazy characters. Or, or evil, that's fun too. <laughs> evil, I'll, Just cause... I'll have to hear that sound someday. I think that, that would be nice. Oh, <laughs> uh, like, oh, especially, like, mean little boys. They're fun to play as well. <laughs> Just because uh, we, we have another chat member submission of a question and comment mm. coming from a um, longtime <laughs> follower of us, Mikolai. Uh, Mikolai would like to know if you've ever played a game called Cruelty Squad. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check it out. 
cruelty squad. I mean, to you, I had to ask because he's been asking it like three or four times now. Okay. I have it. Is it fun? Should I check <laughs> it out? It's a, um, it's a great game, but uh, it's very interesting. It lo looks like puke visually. Uh, it's... Oh, it does! It literally looks like puke! <laughs> <laughs> the same color scheme and everything! I mean, if it's something that looks interesting, uh, I, I don't know what the playability of it is. I mean, but uh, if you can... it's easy to run. It's, te it's technically a shooter from a first-person perspective, and it's a take on cyberpunk, but it's not cybernetic enhancements of body, it's biological one, so you get stuff like, oh, you can shit out of your feet to double jump. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> nice. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I I'll probably check it out now. To be honest. <laughs> well, successful okay. This shield. is a good, good one from New Hexley. Is there much of a difference in voicing a young male character versus voicing a woman, regardless of her age? Definitely. I, well, at least I think there is in my head. There's a different sound to it just because it feels like men and women don't really there's things we we do that kind of cue you in on your g gender in a way i don't know i don't know i don't know like <laughs> like with a little boy yeah it might just not like you might not hit the s's so hard i don't know it's kind of a feeling <laughs> I, I, I think there's a case to be made that if somebody doesn't know you from your other voices, it can be very easy to disguise it. And so, like, it, it's that whole discussion of range when it comes to voice acting. Can you deliver your performances and can you present yourself in a way where it's like, oh, you have versatility, you have this ability to cover a, a spectrum rather than settling into a particular voice and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think based on your history alone between the pitches of female voices you give and the male voices you've done, uh, yeah, I, I would assume that your male voice you have to be more careful with because you don't want to destroy your uh, vocal cords, right? Too, I can go on with this for a pretty long time. <laughs> Also, like, not all little boys, they won't always want them to be that textured so i mean a, a little boy might even sound kind of little girlish it kind of just depends what that what the director's going for mm. yeah yeah uh yeah. Yeah, um, uh, did uh, I answer the question <laughs> yeah, yeah the, 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 i'm just trying to think of a follow-up here but uh maybe, maybe just a bit of personal story <laughs> but i remember when i was like 13 or 14 uh, when I learned how to get into the internet and I was looking up my favorite characters and it turns out like half of the male characters I liked in anime and such are voiced by women actually and I was like, oh, I feel cheated. <laughs> Bo <laughs> it, well, real little boys grow up, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> and then they growl in their voice. <laughs> Yep, yep. Uh, I work on um, the Loud House, and the main the main little boy Lincoln is right before puberty, essentially. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they've had like five of him. They just <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> right. It's so sad. They're like the new Lincoln, the new Lincoln, once a year. <laughs> oh no! Right. Uh, so, yeah, that, that sounds like a nightmare. Well, the same thing was happening in Hey Arnold. I mean, for yep. about the first two or three voices, it was very difficult to distinguish between them because they were being very specific in their picks. Yeah. And I think it actually was that the first voice actor went into part of season two for that show. And then another one came over and was there until about season three or four. And then they got a third one. And then, of course... They had the fifth one for the movie, or fourth, anyway. They had multiple ones for it, but the big thing they did with that was, unlike a lot of these projects where it's one and done, I think the two original voice actors for both Arnold and Gerald got brought back in the finale movie they did a couple years ago. Really? So. I have seen Oh, that's so cool. Were they that what they were Arnold and Gerald or were they just side they characters? They were other characters in the oh, thing, okay. but it was like a cameo and they did, if I remember correctly, do something <laughs> do something to highlight that it was them. 
Uh, the same thing happened with Gumball, awesomely enough. Uh, Nicholas Cantu uh, did come back and do voices on the show. And I believe the second voice actor did as well. I don't know it for 100% certain. But also, Gumball was a unique entity because it went out of its way and wrote into the show explanations and ways yeah. in which their actors got to go out on a high note for their performance, for their time as performing uh, Gumball or um, I forget the fish's name and I feel fucking terrible. Uh, Darwin! Darwin! Darwin. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I didn't. It's funny when I was little, I didn't realize Arnold was changed at all. <laughs> Probably and if I, I if I listen now, the quality of the voice actors that Craig Bartlett and the rest of the crew on that show were giving. Yeah, um, but th this this kind of also is where I want to say we need to go to this question, this talking point. Um, you emphasize to us that when it comes to voice acting and this creative work in general, that you want it understood that you and many others are approaching it with the same passion and creativity and investment that fans are. So I guess yeah. I, I'm just going to say, like, if you have stories or a particular uh, uh, monologue, I guess, or a talking point you want to center around mm -hmm. in terms of how you want the fans to understand the same wavelength that you and they are on just so it, it, it kind of further emphasizes that sense of community that is had with these projects. I think that's something good to emphasize for this interview. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, well, I don't know all voice actors, but at least the ones I do know, they, they really care about the character and it, it you know, they become, it becomes a, a precious thing to you and no one wants to f the, f a character up especially uh, like in in anime uh but we we also have to even if we don't think that something should go a certain way we also are essentially a like a musical instrument you go in and you do what they tell you to do because that's that's what they hired you to do so e even though we have a bit of creative freedom on like inflection or maybe a few lines like yo, 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 or just something, or maybe like instead of stay still, we might add a wriggling or, or we're all going through and seeing what, what works, but they're the final say. I might like a certain way better, but the the people that have hired us they're they're driving the boat you know <laughs> yeah. is there any ever any like issue with uh, look i know you think this line works better but we have 10 t lip flops here and we need to fit into that <laughs> because i know that's sometimes hmm. an issue with dubbing oh yeah yeah oh well it's it's so crazy how awesome the directors are tuned into it mm -hmm. when you get someone like mary elizabeth mcglynn or or wendy lee it is amazing to see them take a take. They'll, they'll say this. Uh, they'll say like, okay, that that probably worked. We need to go two frames to the left or five frames to the right. And the engineer will do it. And it's usually dead on <laughs> because they are just so attuned to it. And if something doesn't fit, everyone will break it down right then and there until we figure it out. Mm. Most of the time it it is resolved during the session. I see. Do you based on those experiences, do you think that might be something you want to aim for down the line once you've got more experience under your belt, more interactions and just more opportunities to do work that comes close to or is similar to the ADR direction? that you were receiving from Wendy and Mary. Oh, I don't I don't know if I'd be good at that. <laughs> I get I get so nervous. I might be too nervous to give people good direction. <laughs> uh. But it I I love to see what they do and I really respect their job. It is not easy keeping all everyone happy, keeping all those voices in your head and the script in your head and getting it to all just hook up together it's incredible and 
They work really hard. Yeah, a good voice director can make or break a dub, I think. It's often the, the, the case that if nobody pays attention to direction or there is no director at all, uh, that's when you get all those lines sounding unnatural or flat because the actors don't know what to do exactly. There'll, there'll be that, but sometimes... I will not say I'm witch dub, but I've <laughs> I've come in, I've come into or sometimes they'll send you really really dumb lines and mm. <laughs> you you and the director you and the engineer or sometimes it's an engineer director I've had now and then <laughs> you guys will try we'll try to take as much liberty as we can to making it sound like like regular english and not something that's translated yeah. usually you can tell not not they don't always want you to do that to fix it but for the most part you know you can yeah yeah absolutely uh the, 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 that's often a complaint i hear with people when it comes to dubs that yeah you can clearly tell this was more or less one-to-one -one translated from japanese or polish or whatever mm -hmm. and uh, that takes people out of the experience as an ASL myself, I don't know. English is weird. Your language is weird. <laughs> it, yeah, definitely. You're weird. <laughs> no, weird. And, and the slang changes really quick, how we say things. And n not everybody who are doing the translations are, like, maybe maybe they're not hearing what you're hearing. Yeah. It, uh, it's just a big collaboration, and sometimes you hit it right, and sometimes you don't. Yeah, as someone who was teaching the language for a few years, I can tell uh, often with, with translations as well that are done in house for us by a studio that is not, you know, natively English. Uh, oftentimes there is uh, uh, a mix up in tenses. So, for example, something should be, let's say, pre uh, present perfect because something is still going on, but they just use past simple. And that suddenly sounds very weird, even if, you know, in context, you understand what the sentence means, but suddenly it's very awkward. Yeah. Ho hopefully your director catches it and mm. y'all can fix it right then. But something slipped by. Oh, when I, I uh, when I was younger, um, when they <laughs> when they talk about like Japanese food and they're like, "This is pizza," and you're <laughs> like, "That's clearly clearly not pizza. Why don't they just say what it is?" Good old Jollyfield Donuts. <laughs> right. Uh, that was. But you know, it's almost funny now. <laughs> Hmm. Well, uh, we did touch up on that. Uh, were you not in the voice acting scene, would you still have the investment in the industry in, for both anime and video games? Uh, probably. I love animation. I went to school to learn how to do it. <laughs> I, I wanted to be a storyboard artist. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a, I still have s s lots of friends who do the more of the drawly art side but just where life took me this is this was the road and <laughs> it, it turned out to be all right yeah. I, I yeah I I originally kind of checked out voiceover because we were doing these shorts in um in school and if you wanted to record people you had to do it yourself mm. it's not because we're students and uh, you don't know how to direct people it's really really hard when you when you are first starting out because you don't know how to pull out the performance you want <laughs> i remember yeah. being like faster slower not like you need to say it you need to say it this way with this emotion in mind. You need to yeah. think about it this way. And I decided to go take a class. And me and my friend were like, oh, shit, Debbie Derry Berry lives over here and is offering classes. Oh, Wait, yeah. what? Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> you got yeah. classes from her? Yeah, yeah. So, so okay, we're like. Now you need to go into more detail about that because I definitely want to know about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, it was during our summer break and it, they had like, because it, because it's an animation major, they, they had like, uh, pamphlets and stuff like that from the industry. And one of the pamphlets that gets passed around every year are, it's like a voice actor one and it had, it's a directory and phone numbers of 
of people to call and stuff. And we checked out voiceover classes and Debbie Derry Berry happened to be offering group classes. And her and I were like, let's go check it out. Let's see what it's about. So we both signed up and we went to her house and took lessons. <laughs> and it was a trip. <laughs> oh, so it was like private tut- tutoring, not in university or anything like that. Oh, damn. Mm-hmm. We went to her house and she has like a little, a little, a room set up for, for recording and she'd be at the computer and she'd give us like a stack of sides to do or to, to learn. And we essentially go and simulate a real session and whew, it's hard at first. It is very hard. It's very oh, yeah. intimidating. Uh, especially when you're like, oh, oh, sorry, let me do it. Sorry, let me do it again. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, stop it. Let me try it again. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sorry. So uh, getting to work with her helped break the ice, helped, helped me learn what was going on. And I happened to meet a, a woman in the class who had a friend casting something. And she's like, will you try out for this? They need a voice of a little boy and they're having trouble casting it and they're looking for more reads. So I did it <laughs> and I got the job. Nice. Uh, I, it was a little caterpillar. His name was Chowser and we went on adventures. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was a studio out of Malaysia. And that was one of the first jobs I did and I, you know, I didn't really think anything was going to come out of those classes, but she asked me and then I was like, huh, maybe I should put together a demo. And De- Debbie, part of her class, I when that was over, she helped me put together the demo, figure out what voices should go on it and stuff like that. And she had someone, she had someone that was able to put in like all the background noises for it so it it sounded pretty pro and that's kind of how i got started great oh way more in that than i expected honestly (laughs) oh i'm sorry no 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 it's perfect (laughs) that was perfect and it's just this continued paralleling of hey just if you see an opportunity go for it yeah always shoot your shot if you can as long as you're not impeding on others and in your case it got you to meet freaking debbie Derryberry of all people that's <laughs> oh, really wild and then oh god it, 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 no it just makes me think about how we got this whole interview going it's like <laughs> you, know, it you never know i i i have a really hard time um reaching out and doing new things and just I'm kind of a nervous person in general, but whenever you go and or when you see an opportunity, you should at least try. You should at least ask. You never know. The worst they can do is say no. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other worst that they can do is say yes, and then you spend three weeks <laughs> panicking. <laughs> How are we gonna get this done properly? <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I feel ya. I um, this doesn't really have anything to do with it, but I I always. There, you know, there's some roles where, where it'd be fucking amazing to get to to do, like, mm-hmm. like something on Rugrats or, or just, or a Powerpuff Girl, like a legacy character. Yeah, yeah. And I now got this to... is, uh, sorry, I will interject. Uh, oh, I go just ahead. gotta get this out of the way. I, I am thinking about it right now, and this is not in any way to downplay Nancy Cartwright's capabilities. She's obviously a good voice actor and has plenty of range. But I could totally see you pulling off Chucky in Rugrats. So may- maybe, maybe somewhere down the road that'll happen. I never know. But I, I got to, I got to be Oblina in the, the like in a yes little, in a mini game or, or you, got, you know no, the... it was a full game. You got to voice her in Nicktoons <laughs> All Star Battle. Yeah. And more importantly, you're taking over for the absolutely uh, uh amazing cynthia cavanaugh on voicing her it's like holy crap those are big shoes to step into <laughs> that was really scary <laughs> yeah i i it, it was something that made me like correction just... christy cavanaugh not cynthia cavanaugh yeah uh, christy. Sorry. 
no, no, bro. It it just it scared the shit out of me, to be quite honest. And I didn't. It, sometimes you you get auditions and you're just like, sure, pff, whatever. I'm not gonna get it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> because they sent them to you or your your agency, you know, the part of the the email is we would like you to audition for these roles, blah blah blah. I get them, I do them, I send them back. So you never know where things are gonna take you. And I, they said, oh, you got the role, and I went, what? And so even voice actors have, oh shit, oh fuck, what am I gonna do? Moments. <laughs> I asked them if I could have extra time to practice. Yeah. And luckily they gave it to me. They were really cool about it. So what did you for... do for that process? If you don't mind my asking, did you end up <laughs> watching any of the show? I went and I got the box set and it's all I would let myself and my mom watch for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, I'm going to try again. Do I sound like her? Okay. I'm going to, we got to watch more. And she'd be like, you sound like her, fuck! Yeah, like, that's it, it, definitely something I want to stress. It, it, it is almost a one-to-one, -one and just matching the late and great uh, Christy Kavanaugh, that's that that's a, a beyond impressive. I have you, no you horse in this great. race, but that's mildly impressive, I have to say. <laughs> the main one you would know, t do is that Christy Kavanaugh also voiced Dexter in Dexter's Lab. I oh, love that Dexter, the Polish drop. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. She she um it, it thank you. I appreciate it. It I oh, no problem. I can hear everything I do wrong, but I, I really wanted to at least get her spirit in there. And she she does a lot of things that you might not know about unless you watch the you know, the show obsessively. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's that there's inflections on her accent where she will emphasize a word or a syllable uh, in a way that's particularly different to maybe how she'll even pronounce it later because there's a certain air of regality that I think Oblina was trying to carry to herself. She uh -huh. wasn't, like, pompous or pretentious. She was just like, I have standards. I am going to hold myself to them. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, yeah. So when you get something like that in your mailbox, it, it made me shudder a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's understandable. Like, this can be make or break, basically. It's, uh, even if, you know, no, nobody pays attention that much, that doesn't really change much in your day-to-day -day professional life. Uh, people who have been fans of that for decades are going to notice. Ah, notice. Oh, and it, it just... I guess that emphasizes how important <laughs> how important um, each role can be to to an actor. Mm. Uh, it's not that one is more important than the others, but you you know you I was aware that people were going to be watching that one, and the the session was scary. <laughs> but eventually, you know, it all evened out, and it wasn't as bad by the end. But definitely intimidating yeah well and at least when it came to that particular work in general as far as i know it everyone who was available to come back uh did i mean you had mm -hmm. um uh i think it was janice coming back to voice xj9 which was insane mm -hmm. uh carlos I was, uh, these are the dlc characters mind you but yeah. carlos I was rocky returning as rocco Carlos! And, <laughs> yes, and of course, Mark DiCarlo being more than ecstatic to voice Hugh Neutron again, not even missing a beat. <gasps> oh but my it's god. Same, but it's the same for everyone else. Um, we had, um, oh my god, I feel so bad that I can't remember his name now, but infamous industry voice actor who voiced uh, Freddy on Scooby-Doo, also coming back to do Garfield again. Um, you had Oh my god. Again, I can't remember all these voice actors' names. Um You can do it. Obviously, we uh, why can I not remember his name? Just voice of Daggett and Zim. Um Oh yeah. Oh god. Anyway, point is is that in in this, they they were particular <laughs> and they were careful with this edition of voicing. Frank Welker, thank you, Luna. Frank Welker, yeah. yeah. 
Frank Welker uh, coming back. You had um, Richard Horvitz coming back. Yes. And all of these choices where it's like, okay, we listen to the fans. We're going to give them what they want. And as far as I understood it, at least for that first week or two, there was a spike in activity for the game and there was a spike in people playing it and mm -hmm. videos popping up on Twitter and YouTube of, hey, look at this crazy tech because the sound design and voice act, voice line edition overhaul was a modest boost of attention for the game that it absolutely needed at launch. Yeah, I think it definitely filled out the world. It was kind of, I don't know. It, it's oh. it's kind of weird them beating on each other without noises. <laughs> yes, and, and you have the pre- and post-battle commentary that they had which was a nice injection of flavor into it. So yeah, you, you, you like, like Rebecca is, I guess what you would call a quote unquote breakout role or something. Um, You're but definitely. it's also like, no, Alex really does have this history under her belt of being part of these really amazing things. And. Oh, oh thanks. I, um, I think with Rebecca, it, it was because uh, a lot of times like with, with Boss Baby back in business, I know everyone's favorite show. <laughs> the 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 little kids really love it, but the adults don't. Where Rebecca, it's not aimed for little kids at all. It's totally an adult cartoon, and I, I feel like things get really popular when adults like them and when adults make the fan art. <laughs> yeah. Hello, it, it, Timmy. It, it, a, a new series came out with your favorite actors that played on Boss Baby. Want to watch it together? Sure, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who's Alex Cesaris? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but well, it's, it, it, it's always it's really that... cool. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. It's always really cool when. Oh, I got a message from someone on Twitter, I think. And they were telling me how their little kid recognized my voice from Rebecca. She was like, oh, that's Boss Bay or that's Stacy. <laughs> And I thought it was, I thought that was really cool. I mean, I don't know if she watched it or not because it's adult, <laughs> but, but I, I always think it's cool when little kids point, can point out your voice in other things and are excited. Oh no, it, it was a, it was a thing for me. Like I noticed changes that were happening in the Rugrats cast. Grand, it was one particular thing. But I also noticed it, ha noticed it happening for freaking Fairly Odd Parents when they changed the voices of AJ and the other one I can't remember, Timmy's best friend. Oh. And I'm like, wait a minute, why does that sound different? Oh, I remember actively yeah. being upset about it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stuff, definitely. And those kids are going to grow up someday and they'll hear you in something else a few years down the line and they're going to freak the fuck out. I hope so. <laughs> it's why I still, t well, I, I mean, I'll champion it, but it's why I lost my mind when I started watching The Ghost and Molly McGee. I was like, oh my God, it's Laura Jill Miller. <laughs> Laura Jill, she's awesome. She is way too cool. She she deserves more attention. Uh, yeah, Cyberpunk Edge Runners is a family picture. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if the kid overheard it, it would probably be chances are that they were just like passing through the room because good parents are going to be like, hey, I'm going to watch this thing and you're going to hear some things. Uh, please don't repeat it. Please understand. <laughs> I will appreciate it if you do that. And some kids are like, don't worry, mom. I know I'm not supposed to pay attention and watch this thing. And then they'll peek from around the corner and watch it. Anyway. <laughs> I was that way with my mom in South Park, but. Oh yeah, my um, my my mom gave up. I just watched whatever I wanted. Most yeah, of the exactly. Time. Um, it, it, it's it, it it is that important, and you guys, your voice actors in general, are starting to get better about that. Voicing it to the studio, at least. I mean, voicing it. Obviously, it falls on deaf ears a lot for you know the reasons they do. But as far as I understand it, there is more of an impact than there used to not be of you guys saying, hey, maybe don't screw with these voices or maybe give it attention in a good way when the voices are going to change. And I think, you know, yeah. again, going back to Gumball from earlier, it's important to emphasize that. And I 
it, yeah. it sounds like from the way you described it, Loud House was trying to find a happy medium there. Yeah, and there's nothing really you can do when <laughs> when your little boy or when the little boy grows up. You have to find someone else. But I I, I know with their casting calls, they they take great care into trying to match the voice and the personality. Mm. Tina, mute yourself. Why? Buzzing again. Oh no. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Did that fix it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> Little Timmy, why did you call all your friends Chooms? Why did you say that Lego set was Nova? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry that, about that would be the funniest if, like, people, if people's kids just started blurting out the cyberpunk lingo. Don't worry why about that. Why did Little Timmy say he school? wanted to flatline Becky? <laughs> I Choom could totally work because he just replaced dude or man. Oh, uh, premium's the other one. Replacing yeah! premium with cream is extremely easy. It's just dudes already say premium down. when they're talking about their computers, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Premium. A friend of mine started using cream a lot after Red Runners whenever I talk with her. And you know what? Yeah, I can respect that. <laughs> Works. And it doesn't sound goofy. <laughs> Well, and I guess one of the ones that the kids could get away with is something's pretty lame or dumb. They can say gonk instead, and nobody's going to get that, but the kid is going to feel cool by saying it. Uh, the yeah. The kids are funny words. I can't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, it was, it's such a trip when you get out of school and you realize that you don't know the hip language anymore. Mm. It's really weird. Well... Uh, that mostly covers our list. Do we have any chat questions we did not go through here? Um, so, yeah, I'll uh, pull off some of the big ones. Uh, Luna was asking, um, do you have any cons you were playing to be at or ones that have reached out to you that maybe you can talk about possibly? Um, and what is I, – I, I think this would be a question to throw out there. Um, what is your level level of comfort with fans coming to you and asking you questions and maybe getting advice or input from you, either in the industry or just work you do in general? Oh, cool. Um, I don't really mind. I it takes me sometimes to check my messages just because I'm a bad Twitter slash Instagram person, <laughs> and, and I get I get shy about it, and um, and now and then like. I let them build up and I'm sorry for that. But but if I see someone asking me a question, I usually I usually try to answer eventually. Uh what was the other question? Uh, <laughs> the other question is if if they're coming to you with those questions, uh what ones you feel comfortable with them asking about like advice on work. Luna Luna was making a half joking comment of wanting to uh, sometime reach out to you today for maybe some casual voice coaching stuff. <laughs> she's interested in getting into that industry herself. Um, Definitely. You, you know what? I can tell you all something right now that will help. Um, D. Bradley Baker has a website. It's like for for people who want to do voiceover. Let me see if I can find it. I was going to say, it's D. Bradley Baker and then two or three other major like 100 plus list uh, names, uh, people who are doing master class and other types of stuff at the moment. But yeah, he's he's the one doing some new uh, like open source type website or something. I found it. Like I found it. It's um, I want to be a voice actor dot com. And I use that quite a bit, actually, myself, because um, if you want a pro, you don't look any further than D, right? Mm. So he he's answered all the yeah. all the most basic questions and stuff, uh, like like how to put together a demo, maybe like going pro, uh, vocal strain, the cat newbie mistakes. <laughs> I check that one out a lot. So honestly, they c he could probably answer it better than I could, <laughs> mm. but but I. Uh, I'm always willing to 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 share my experience. Um, I I took 
classes in the before time when we could go see each other face to face. <laughs> but um, I think there's there's classes you can take online, and and a lot of with voiceover, it's kind of getting yourself out there, getting the street cred <laughs> in cyber t- cyberpunk terms, and and learning you know the etiquette on on how a a session a session works but for the most part i i just took classes to figure out how it was going and and it's kind of sorry it's my my answer is a bit stunted no, i no, it's fine <laughs> I think that when I went and took classes with like women in animation, there were, it was a, women in animation was a group that provided things, but cheaper, like they would put together these workshops with really awesome uh, directors and stuff. And you would get packets, very similar to Debbie's class, and you would go in and perform. And you perform in front of the director, the, the, the recording engineer, your peers. And it's very similar to what a casting call would be or or what a job would be like. And it helps get rid of some of those nerves because that that's a big deal. <laughs> Just being able to function when you're when you're there <laughs> in the moment. And uh, I, I think that if you can taking a class just to see what it's about and if you like it is the first step mm. that's fair i've always like as you said shooting your shot and if it doesn't work out well at least i tried right ah and and but, but there's other things you can do too a lot of people online are looking for voice actors for mm-hmm. for little independent projects and you might not have uh it might start out slow mine started out very slow mm-hmm. but part of it is is just doing it and trying and reading for people that you, that it might not go anywhere like like for a big studio but if you're doing projects with people uh i always think that's a plus L- like for instance there's a lot of people at cal arts who do <coughs> excuse me that do casting calls for for their short films for school mm. that would definitely be something i would try out for as a up-and-comer because those are the animators that are gonna go on to make more shit <laughs> well, hopefully if they pass <laughs> uh, yeah i mean they got a pretty good chance if they're already at cal arts <laughs> or you know they don't attach their project to warner brothers discovery and they get shit <laughs> out of the blue sorry yeah. had to bring that up yeah bring- yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. A, a lot of it is putting yourself out there, seeing if you like it. Um, also, I just I'm a huge reader in general. You can read scripts and find them online for free a lot of times, and it it can be fun with your friends or just you know on your own to to highlight out the the lines of a character and go through it as if you were the character. Oh, another thing that I did did slash do sometimes is. <laughs> Like uh, when I was younger and I played Zelda or something, there's no dialogue or or there's dialogue, but they don't talk. Mm-hmm. So I'd read everything in a character's voice, <laughs> and, and it, it's just practice, you know, getting getting to be comfortable with that character. Or maybe you might read a book or or several pages of something in that character's voice to to see if you can embody that character with whatever turns the scripts got for you you know yeah i think one of the big things i saw a semi-professional voice actor mention at some point and i think uh, a significantly bigger voice actor either retweeted or qrt'd uh with further emphasis on it was avoid doing characters that are already voiced uh at least in terms of the submissions you're giving if you want to get work uh, in the industry, it was don't worry about trying to do your most uh, best impression of a character that's already existing. Take something that isn't voiced at some point already 
or try to come up with a tone or a uh, character that plays to a specific thing where it can be uh, clearly understood by the people you would be submitting these reels to so they yeah. have an idea of what they can work with. And to probably do like, what, four to six kinds of variations in your voices? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I like, let's say you get, uh, or are you talking about like for an audition or for your, your demo? Uh, kind of for both. For both? Well, with, with your audition, you, you probably don't want to do like six different takes just because the, the person yes, who's casting. Yes, in that case, I would be talking about for your reel. My, my mistake. Oh, no, no, it's okay. Um, but you, you might want to, sometimes they'll specif specify we want one take or we want two takes. But I always, if I have an idea for something and and I don't think that's going to be the nest, that <laughs> I might do two takes for something if, I, if I'm inspired or have an idea. One might be the straighter take that you think will work. And then after that, I'll put something maybe the the weird one <laughs> and you, you never know um sometimes they like the weird take but with with your demo you definitely want to pick things that show your range like for women in particular i would recommend working on a little boy uh working on someone who's a, a teenager someone who's a mother like role or you know an an authority figure and then a grandma mm -hmm. and uh, it's true it's true because like for instance in boss baby the ki the little kids go into a library and there's a bunch of old people and we're filling out the world with our walla so everyone will have to go down the line and do an old person saying something <laughs> so even though you were hired to do this voice you might end up having to throw one of these in too you know <laughs> it's all about uh what you got in your back pocket to bring into the game when it, when it's taking place yeah i can't speak and hold yourself that that's fair. so eerily familiar <laughs> oh, oh really shouldn't have been several grandmas or also, uh, I do this on um, Rent-A-Girlfriend. Oh, <laughs> Kasuke, you really need to marry my precious angel. Oh, oh that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you might go in for one thing and something else pops up too. Yeah. When it comes to putting out yourself, chat mentioned, and so that's also something that uh, came to my mind. In the modern era of the internet, we've got... Uh, voice actors like Su Sung Won Cho or uh, Gianni, I can't spell his last name, uh, just <laughs> doing a bunch of shit posts and putting them on the internet with their full range because sometimes you pretend to be an old person and sometimes for a young person, but it's always for a joke. And uh, that also seems to work quite well. Uh, well, like I said, you never know who is going to fill out the world that your character is in. Yeah. So it's good. it's good to to work on things that don't sound like your normal or like the the character that you're probably going to get hired to be no no matter what show, you know, like if you're on a union show you're probably going to do extra voices that's just how it works at least mm. one other voice so be prepared <laughs> um with with people on YouTube i think it's awesome that they're like fuck it i'm just going to do what i like to do i hope people like it and it, fuck, it took off for them, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> what, what's cool is that they found this, they got, they got to do voiceover by just going, putting themselves out there and trying. And there's no harm in trying. And they, your, your first few times, it probably will be hard because you're figuring things out. But I think if you keep at things, a and you're good at them, you you know. Like, even though I want to be a tennis player, I'll never be a tennis star. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, sometimes, at least with me, I try to go with what I'm my strengths are, and push 
towards that and get better at that. But there's no harm in trying things that you've never tried before or that you might not be the best at right away because you don't know in a few years where things will take you. Yeah. In the wise words of a certain do uh, dog, dude, sucking at something is the first step at being sort of good at something. <laughs> It's really hard. It's really hard to be a beginner at things because we, we don't want to feel stupid or, yeah. or or have people make fun of you because you suck. <laughs> but if you don't try, then you'll never see where it takes you. Yeah. I mean, with video editing, I can tell my, say myself that uh, there is a lot of more moving parts than I thought. And now whenever I watch videos made by someone else, it's like, damn, that's impressive. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and it, and it, especially with uh with creative jobs, I think it takes a while to build up your knowledge because there's like you said, there's so many moving parts. Getting to know the community and feeling comfortable with what you're doing, it it, it takes everybody different amounts of time, but there's always a learning curve. Of course, yeah. Um, so I wanted to chime in with, uh, some other notable voice work that I think we didn't bring up that I see on your IMDb page. <coughs> um, we've got you and I feel dumb for not mentioning this, uh, Rose, the Raider from Fallout 76. Yeah. <laughs> what up um, Raiders? <laughs> or no, uh, Wasteland we, Wanders. We, we also, uh, you, you emphasize that you got a little bit addicted to the game for a bit. <laughs> when it initially came out definitely oh gosh i i really like fallout 76 it was fun it because it, it kind of it kind of reminds me of the things i like about cyberpunk just getting to kind of wander around and you don't necessarily have to do the main plot line you can just do whatever i always think that's cool open I mean, world that's, stuff that, that's one been one of the advantages of the fallout series and with 76 especially like it, it Within gamer discourse, it's always delicate, touching stuff concerning Bethesda, but at least <laughs> in terms of the uh, experience offered in gameplay and the changes and improvements they made, uh, the game is much, much, much more favorable to both soloing and just being more accessible now. Mm -hmm. uh, they did a lot of overhauls and tweaks for it, so uh, my advice is, Alex, be careful getting back into that game because you may end up sinking another huge chunk of time into it um <laughs> yeah maybe maybe when i'm done with cyberpunk i don't know i i kind of want to do cyberpunk again but as a uh what's it called not the street kid the pff, not the corp no, no not the no corp oh uh nomad. nomad yeah yeah uh that's the one with most gameplay the most gameplay in its uh intro so actually i would say yeah that's a great one to choose uh yeah Corpo's a lot more hands off but at the same time corpo gets a metric fuck ton of extra dialogue in the game oh really I can oh see yeah that. um and then the other one uh luna uh expressed it, it, luna and chat expressed a uh, great fondness of is you uh doing voice work for baby shark <laughs> oh man i love the baby shark gang they're a lot of fun and uh that was kind of an unexpected job you you know ones that you just like oh okay cool sure <laughs> yeah uh that one is uh it's a the preschool one and they they took it from the youtube series but they made this one union and nickelodeon <laughs> and they're they're really trying to make cool songs for it and it, it's been a lot of fun working on that one the direct I, I... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, as far as I know, the Nick Jr. department is still on their toes about developing stuff that is like educational, that is staying appropriate for the audience. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, you have stuff like that out there these days that is more like, oh, it's just mindless animation thrown at the kids. And it's like, yeah, I'm sure you can make that argument, but if it's attached to certain studios or things, the problems with them aside, if they're being handled properly, then it's going to be something good. And as far as I understand it, like they still are holding up as strong as they did back in the nineties and early two thousands. 
Yeah, the the their um their preschool game is strong, right? <laughs> yeah, it feels like they um they take a lot of <sighs> with preschool. It's the <sighs> gosh, I don't know how to say it. Preschoolers are really like a good. <sighs> Let me start over. It seems like the preschool shows last a bit longer. And they have a really big fan base because they're the little kids that are still at home and aren't, you know, in school and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, I, I'm hoping that this one runs for a while. <laughs> That's fair. I feel like it's a growing thing at, at all times. That's why those shows keep up because, well, usually there you don't need to worry about first episode and such. That little kids don't really care. And mm. uh, there's always, you know, new kids growing up just enough to watch something on TV. And even if they mm -hmm. grow up further, they might be like, oh, it's Baby Shark on TV. I like that as a child. Let's let's watch one more episode. Just make, let's make sure my siblings don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, also, we got a really good director on that one. Her name is Serena Irwin. Uh, she's worked on everything, dude. <laughs> but, but, uh... I think they they were like, huh, this cri this this pop craze for the baby shark song. Let's try to recreate that, but more songs so people don't go crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have uh, a coworker at my job that has a kid, and she hates that song with a passion. <laughs> well, then, yeah, um... I can see that. I'm gambling she's probably appreciative of the show then because at least it brings something different to the table. Yeah. I know <laughs> at least with some of those shows, when it comes to those songs that they're developing, they really put an emphasis on being, hey, can we not just churn out mindless scribble? Can we actually put something into this that, one, won't make the parents hate it because we don't want them to start hating the show and then <laughs> – their kids don't watch it anymore but more importantly can we put this out there so it's not like unpleasant to them so it's just <laughs> neutral it's yeah something that doesn't bother them and then of course you'll have one out of every 10 of those 20 songs it's like oh my god this slaps i actually like this there's something going on here with this track i mean god, yeah I definitely they've got they've got some good songs on there that are that definite they're definite earworms <laughs> I mean, that was the, also the case with uh, Phineas and Ferb, from what I remember. The original show did not have any songs at all. But oh, said, God, yeah. There, there needs oh. to be at least one song an episode. And it turns out, hey, a bunch of bangers came out of that. Well, um, yeah, and then they went on to work with uh, Al Yankovic on Milo Murphy's Law. And that show absolutely slaps. It is well-written. It's very funny. It's got a lot of slapstick humor for obvious reasons. Um, Which I would make an unironic recommendation. Hey, everybody should watch Milo Murphy's Law. That's a great show. Milo Murphy's Law. Okay, I'm going to check that out. Yeah, it, it's from the same team from Phineas and Ferb, but it's just more like all ages, even more. And it's about just this kid who is voiced by Weird Al Yankovic uh, having to deal with the fact that he is seemingly eternally cursed to have oh. bad luck, but He's very optimistic and outgoing about it. That sounds uh, and rot, actually. The, the yeah. crew of the show was working directly with him on each one of it. I don't know what happened to the show, but it is oh, where it is now. That's cool. Um, I heard he's really nice. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, that was I, the whole thing of Coolio coming forward and saying nobody's going to be able to properly – uh, parody or satirize uh, Gangsta's Paradise and here he comes in with this song and then like after it they became best friends or something yeah that's cool I like how he was like it was my bad no yeah. he's a cool dude yeah. <laughs> I was being a dick <laughs> oh, rest in peace yeah uh, um, I saw him I I've never met Weird Al but <laughs> one time I was walking out of work and I saw him in his car waiting to go to work <laughs> Well, that's kind of cool. Small world. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to... Sorry, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I 
walked by uh, NSYNC recording a music video when I went to Disney World over two decades ago. Shut up! You were yeah, in an serious. I was, video? Oh my, my mom God. had gotten one of those uh, special plans where it's like you get into the park an hour or two early. And I was oh. jonesing to go to Space Mountain right away. Lo and behold, there was an area closed off. And we went over and looked and we were like, oh my God, that's NSYNC! <laughs> and they were like, hey, yeah, you can chill and watch. We're not going to have a problem with it. Just, you know, don't talk or interfere with what we're recording. And <laughs> you guys can just stick around and look and listen to what's going on. And we did that for like five minutes. And we got a little way back from them, which was cool. <gasps> that is so awesome. What a cool, what a cool meet. Well, I guess you didn't meet him. What a cool thing to happen at Disney. Yeah. I'd have been it, it tripping. something else. And. Uh, I, I guess this well never mind <laughs> and the line to space mountain grew by 200 people in those five minutes oh, oh. God. no thank god no there was there was zero line because of that early access to the park um, nice. that was before their lines got insane and completely out of control and they had to start doing fast paths oh yeah i i went to um <laughs> i was gonna go see a concert at the downtown Disney area, it wasn't there, it turned out. I'm glad I checked. Because <laughs> they used to have a House of Blues there. Yeah. And I I went there, like, a couple before I got sick, and it was freaking slammed, man. It, like, just to get food or to walk anywhere, it, it was... Downtown Disney used to be the not so crowded part, but <laughs> they like they check your bags and have you go through a metal detector just to go to the mall now. Oh my! I know, isn't that crazy? That is insane. It um, it, it felt overwhelming with so many people there. Uh, we have uh Luna bringing up a question. Was there any particular? Uh, when when you were doing work for Baby Shark, um, was it that kind of was it the usual sit in your booth, do your recordings, and that's it, or was it one of those situations where you were uh, working alongside the other cast members? Uh, for that one, oh, there's quite a few people for the main cast, and it seemed like sometimes it they would bring us in all together for cast recordings and that was really awesome uh, Especially... sorry oh. no go ahead go ahead luna in particular was wondering was there uh were, were you guys cast alongside or recording alongside uh cardi b in the episode that she was in no <laughs> Uh, Not at all. We 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 have been recording all these things from home, but we didn't get to meet her. I think that particular episode I recorded by myself. Okay. It 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 just kind of depends, I think, with everyone's schedule and if they want us to do a group recording. Because some of some of the episodes, like Chucks, will be in it for like one one line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest will be baby and and it, whomever the episode focuses on. So they'll just, you know, have you come in, do your line, do the song if there's a song that day, and then that's it. But it's always the best when you get the full cast in there and, and you do it like a like we used to. But no Cardi. <laughs> they, that was that was probably like filmed away from everyone and handled very like special and yeah, <laughs> I was not in the room. Uh, Luna um, uh, wanting to advise, uh, she sees that you're a big fan of Britney Spears as well. Um, recommend streaming her al her album Blackout. And uh, the, it's also exploring some of more the, the more personal topics recently, like her uh, attitude towards the paparazzi and developments in her life, I'm guessing. Um, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, like, if anything, that's definitely an artist I should probably consider listening to. Mm. Some more recent hey, stuff. I like Britney. Um, I, my, my, one of my good friends from um, animation school is a total Britney fan so i always <laughs> i always get the deets from her <laughs> i think these are the ones that we can uh close out with 
um, to bring it briefly back to Edge Runners, uh, can you remember what uh, lines from Edge Runners ended up needing the most takes from you? Mm. I'm thinking. Take your time. I think it was the first episode, just because we were figuring out where she sat. And, uh, like, like, even though, like, hey, you don't remember me and stuff like that after all we've been through. Yeah. It, it was only really hard just because we were we were figuring out, oh, that's a bit too sultry or, oh, that's a bit too this or that. And they were kind of like the project was getting to know me and I was getting to know the project. Mm. <laughs> so that, that was probably the hardest the hardest part. Um, but after you, you get into a groove, it it usually doesn't take you too long. And, and if anything, when you're when you're when you're going through and they're picking which line that they like better, it doesn't take too long because they have they have so many alternatives and and what they want in mind. It's pretty it's a quick fix, you know. Yeah, I know that's fair. Uh, I think anyone that plays Tabletop RPGs can relate, like, okay, I wrote down this character, I wrote this, this, and this, I'm going to play them like this <laughs> and that, you get two hours into a session, and then it's like, wait, no, actually, it's going to be something completely different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so when, when you're first going into, they'll play you the reference of what they like, mm -hmm. and for the most part, if you just go off of what your ref what the reference was or the audition you sent in, you're good. But now and then they're like, uh, I like this, but we're going to do it this way. Yeah. And you just have to say, okay. <laughs> uh, um, let me do a quick look over of the question list again to make sure there wasn't anything we particularly missed. All right. Um. <laughs> Uh, we already went over anything in particular you'd love to work on. Um, yeah. Uh, we went... Rugrats. <laughs> That's fair. Um, no, I, I think we have gotten everything. Yeah, I think we got everything from the uh, fun uh, list here as well. One exception is Mikoy asking again, have you seen Wax or the Discovery of Television Among the Beasts? <laughs> Christ, you know, you shouldn't have enabled him. What? Wait, wait, say that again? <laughs> Wax or the Discovery of Television Among the Beasts. It's a movie from 1991, and in fact, it's the first movie ever uploaded to the internet in 1993. I have not, but I probably will now. <laughs> uh, uh, I watched it just yesterday. It's hella artsy, and it's basically about a guy. It starts like a documentary about beasts, but it's slowly about a guy discovering that, you know, oh, Actually, the fact that I work for the military industrial complex means I indirectly kill people and he's slowly losing himself and his identity. And it gets really okay. trippy. Is it like a racer head? <laughs> Close, but with less production value. Okay. <laughs> There's also a huge element of the, uh, of the narrative, like gaslighting the viewer or something like that. Um, but yeah, basically it's... It's it's very creative with its use of language. A razor hair it's much it's much more reliant on visuals, whereas this movie uses a lot of very early computer effects. It prides itself on that. It does some interesting stuff with that. But the way the character speaks after you just listen, listen, and okay, okay, and suddenly you go like, wait, wait, no, that sentence makes zero sense. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna I'll to I'll totally give it a watch. It's on YouTube. What do you mean? Did I do the the Marge voice while you were gone, Quadratic? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to bother doing that now. <laughs> I brought it up. I don't think that's appropriate for you to be asking in this very important and professional interview, Quadratic. <laughs> okay. Well, enjoyed it that much, Alex? <laughs> yeah, I loved it. It was um, absolutely great. <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, oh, well, homie. About having experience doing uh, like that woman who's been smoking for 30 years. You know, you just have to let them know about how wonderful their nephew is. And <laughs> <laughs> Good run, Ow. good run. Okay, nice. yeah, no more of that. I can't keep doing that. Well, um, <laughs> I think the last thing, thing we've got is free forum. Do you want to address the people in the audience in some way? Do you have something to say? 
uh, thank you for having me. And uh, I, it, it's really, Rebecca is, is really important to me. I, I really am, I lucked out getting this role and it, it kind of opened a lot of doors. I get to learn about cyberpunk and ed and what an edge runner is. I get to talk to you guys. I it's really cool that uh, people are interested in her, and it gives me a chance to connect with you guys and 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 uh, and talk to people from around the world. And I think that's fucking awesome. <laughs> that's great. Um. Is there, uh, oh God, what's, how, how do I want to ask this? Is there anything you want to, uh, shill as something upcoming or conventions you want to say you might, are, are looking at or might be attempting to go to or any place, website, uh, platform that you want to direct people to in terms of finding you or being able to support you? Really? Any websites yet? You can find me on Twitter. <laughs> um, I, I am not really big on the con scene. I'm just kind of figuring it out, it, especially, you know, COVID happened and I, I kind of put that on pause. But I, I think a few, a few cons from Texas might have reached out to me that I, I need to look into, but I'm not, I'm not sure yet. I'm kind of a noob about it all, guys. <laughs> that's, that's understandable. Don't worry about it. Like which which ones do you go to? Which ones are the cool ones? What do I bring? <laughs> I, I mean, uh, you already mentioned it on pure fluidity of the conversation alone and the openness. I mean, people will call it a hellscape and a cesspool, but Twitter is the place to go to if you're wanting active conversation and you want it to be like accessible with in in terms of finding the information you want to get. The algorithms and everything are going to do what they do in terms of either suppressing information or helping spread misinformation or whatever. It, it, it's yeah. just, you know, that's where people go for the active and live conversations. Outside of that, um, obviously, I mean, like, I don't know how much you can do independently, but maybe you should look into finding something in which you could do on Patreon, not unlike what you do on, um, what, what is it? Streamly or that website where you do the, um, the phone calls or the sig the sign pictures. Yeah. I, I'm still kind of figuring that out too. <laughs> yeah. There's also, I think cameo is called the, the website yes. called where you can just, people can hire you for a few bucks to do a short, short read of probably a joke or a shit post. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, it also be careful about emphasizing any characters or whatever you would be voicing on those websites, because I know um, some voice actors in the past have gotten in trouble with it, but some others yeah. are like, no, this role is so past me, and I can't get in trouble with it, that it's like, no. Um, I can't yeah. remember the, who the voice is, but um, the voice of Otacon in Metal Gear Solid is still doing stuff as Otacon to this day, these days. Obviously, David Hayter is still like, screw it. I'm going to voice Solid Snake. You can't stop mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, so Definitely. Maybe... I had a friend who they asked to stop doing that that character. Yeah. Be uh, it was kind of during when they were doing the NFT things. Oh, <laughs> no. God. I know, right? But... Uh, so th thank you thank you for the caution the the word of caution it, it's kind of scary what you're gonna get in trouble with and not with all this stuff well and that's why i was always like hey we we apologize if anything negative outcomes from doing this interview with us you know we, we are literally doing it as an attitude of I think we want to ask these questions. it's gonna be fine a week from yeah, now i know i know, I know. <laughs> Shh. um <laughs> it, it it's that at least for me, when I was thinking about the stuff Tidu does and what I want to do in relation to that, yeah, it's cool that we're the ones here sitting down and asking the questions, but I don't want it to be about us. The 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 luxury, the gift is being able to talk one-on-one, -on -one, but I want people's questions answered. I want information to spread. We learned so much just by asking questions. We should do that more often. And... Uh to go on a little semi-anti-capitalist rant, uh, corruption and business and all that other crap uh, steps in the way of that. Um, and that results in people not broadening their horizons and expanding their information base. So mm -hmm. if we can help uh, 
uh, cultivate that, then I think we're doing a good job. So in relation to that, uh, you can find Tidu at Patreon on uh, Last Minute Essays on Patreon. And he is quoted as saying, this is hot takes about media in video form. Just watch my show. Uh, he rants <laughs> about a lot of things. And since people prefer to listening to reading, he's making videos. It's an uphill battle, but he has a decent microphone and some brain worms. So he hopes you will find something of value in his Patreon account. Oh, God. This um, every dollar spent towards uh, Tidu's Patreon will give him a massive ego boost and uh, inflict, inflict more uh positivity towards its pride on working on it um obviously uh you can pledge there if you like what he's doing video wise when it comes to years ago huh holy shit <laughs> when, when it comes to the other major focal points uh we have our uh other co-streamer in here uh boof woof goof you can find them on twitch and twitter by the same name um if you want to go there and back with donations or subs on twitch you you can do whatever you want there. Um, we have occasional streaming we do. We're going to try to tighten up that up going forward. Uh, I would plug the official Discord for Council Mechanica, but I have poorly uh, set up the permissions and uh, <laughs> roles on there. So give us some time and maybe we'll plug that again properly in the future. And Wait. you can find... Go ahead. It's a whip. <laughs> it's a work it's in a progress. Work, yes, it's definitely a whip. A lot of Council Mechanica is a whip. Um, but Tidu's about the only one who I think isn't a work in progress. He has proof of concept. It's all just pathological in the library of ruinous monster troops. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Um, <laughs> uh, and then for me, it's uh, at... Uh, uh, at Space Between All on Twitter, if you want to find me there, um, you start following me at your own risk. I take no accountability. <laughs> um, and then it's twitch.tv slash null and void, but there is an underscore after null and an underscore after end. Yeah. Um, someone else has that name already on Twitch, despite the fact that they're not using the channel actively. <laughs> um, Classic. So that is what that is. And, and last but the most, Alex is a professional voice actor that you can find in many series, but also on Twitter at Alex underscore E underscore Cazares. I, am I pronouncing that right? <laughs> yeah, is it Cazares or Cazares? Because, oh, well, uh, here in Marco, we call it Cazares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm an Alejandro too, but I just go by Alex. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. So you can find Alejandra Cesar <laughs> at um, Alex underscore E underscore Cesar is C-A-Z-R C-A-Z-A-R-E-S. Yeah. Um, but besides that, we have a very big, 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 big thanks to the artists that were so kind as to share uh, their uh, productions, their creations with us to use as the background artwork in this stream. I was supposed to mention this before we started streaming and I didn't, I am very sorry, considering that's what I emphasized in the DM I sent to all these people. We would like to thank, uh, oh my God, I can't remember how to pronounce his name now. Uh, <laughs> hang on, I've got the Google Translate. I've been streaming a while. <laughs> uh, Joao Pereira Creations, thank you for contributing uh, your piece with uh, uh, allowing us to use your piece. Uh, Nami at Nami Ori on Twitter. Uh, Joao Pereira was at JPC Creations or at JP Creations. Uh, Super Apple Man, well known for their uh, chibi art that they do of uh, hollow mems. Um, you can find them at, uh, you can find them with Super Apple Man. Uh, on Twitter and YouTube. Uh, their at is a series of numbers and letters that I'm going to read off as quick as I can in all caps except for the last one. KW7MD8FEWTZIMX and in the lowercase x. Kate W at Kate W021. We also have uh, Foxarius going by Fox at Foxarius F O X X A R. I U S, uh, self Seth Keel in particular. Thank you for your artwork. 
that we were using uh, at Seth Keel. That's S E T H K I E L L. Carmine at K four R M I N S A N. Uh, you can find them on Twitter there. Eito Fukudo, uh, going by at Fukudo Eito. That's F U K U R O E I T O. And then last but not least, uh, Raphael Francois, who goes by at Raphaelos on Twitter. R A T H A E L O S. Thank you for allowing us the gift of being able to show your art on stream and to give us sufficient background imagery to show in a slideshow during the stream. Yep. Uh, Thank we you would very not much. be here yeah. without your permissions, and we appreciate that as well. And we appreciate everybody stopping by for the chat, our regulars and our newcomers. Um, please look forward to more stuff like this in the future. Hopefully, uh, you'll be able to catch the bots on Twitch, but the more mm -hmm. reliable place for it will be on t -Do's channel, uh, Last Minute Essays on YouTube. Yeah, you so... will find an archive of it on there with uh, closed captioning that he will add and post. Yeah, but, uh, so on technical side, the VOD should be available on Twitch right after that if you missed a part of that. Uh, but if you have uh, are hard of hearing or just prefer to have the text on screen, I will edit in everything we said and put that on, on screen with you know appropriate colors and placement to show who's saying what. It's going to be a bitch to edit, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so hard. <laughs> Thanks again, Alex. We we can't. We I don't think we'll ever be able to thank you enough for giving us this opportunity and for taking some precious free time out of your weekend to come hang out with us and shoot the shit for two and a half hours. Thank five you. hours total now. I uh, know, Frau. Thank you so much for having me. I had so much fun. I, I really enjoyed talking to you guys. I love talking about edge runners, cyberpunk, video games, anime, cartoons. <sighs> well, All up my alley. I'm happy with it. Just, you know, we... we we appreciate it greatly. If there are people you want to let know that you think we would have fun talking to or help more people in various communities learn more insider details that they can disclose, then just, you know, send them our way if you can or if you want to. It's up to you. I need to get the proper um, phone books around my computer then. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, we have a lot of work to do for future stuff. But thank you, everyone, for stopping by. And... uh we will see you next time, whenever that is. Cheers. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye.